Welcome to Flourish in the Foreign, an award-winning podcast that celebrates, elevates, and affirms the voices and stories of Black women living and thriving abroad, while exploring living abroad as a pathway to wellness. I'm your host, Christine Job, a Black American woman with Trinidadian roots, podcaster, business strategist, and entrepreneur based in Valencia, Spain. Hey everyone, welcome to Flourish in the Foreign. I am your host, Christine Job. So happy that you are here to enjoy this episode. This last episode for a minute as we kind of reset for the next season. This episode is going to be a little bit different. First, we have a whole bunch of announcements, so stick with me. There are a lot of announcements, but I do have a special something for y'all at the very end of this episode. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that, okay? All right, so the announcements that we have today. First things first. Our Patreon is going to end at the very end of this year. So I'm asking everyone to move over to our Buy Me a Coffee Flourish and Foreign Community membership. Buy Me a Coffee has really great features because you can just do one time donations and support. Or you can now become members of my Buy Me a Coffee community membership. It's an easy way for you to support this podcast, just like y'all support Hulu and Netflix and all them. You can support this here Black solo indie podcaster monthly. First tier at $5 a month, the next tier at $10 a month, and the third tier at $20 a month. Now, everyone who becomes a member and has a member for at least Three months is going to get a handwritten thank you note from me. And actually, some of you guys who have purchased products or done some courses with me know that I like to do that sometimes. I really like sending out handwritten notes. I don't know. It's a Southern girl in me. I'm going to drop like the news for anything that's upcoming. Y'all going to know first. Now I am bringing back the Flourish and Form book club. I am. I am, and we're going to be doing our author chats again. So if you're a member of the Flourish and Forum Buy Me a Coffee membership, you'll get an invitation to join the conversation. Even if at the moment you're not able to support the podcast by becoming a member, this interview will go live on the podcast feed. It's just that it'll go live later. It'll be edited and it won't have the Q&A and you won't get any of your questions answered. That's it. But those are the kinds of things going to be available in the membership. And I already have some more books. I'm starting to line up interviews for the rest of this year because that's like my happy place. I really like reading these books and I really love talking to these authors and bring them to you. OK, so that's for all of the tiers. Now, the second tier is everything I just mentioned, plus a monthly coffee chat with me where I'm going to pick a topic about black mobility geopolitics, something in the news, and we're going to chat about it. And you can ask me questions about it, but like that's what we're going to do. We're going to have like a very chill conversation about migration, living abroad, living a life well lived, all of those things. Now, the third tier has everything I just mentioned, plus... Exclusive access to the behind the scenes of the podcast. Now, some of you guys are podcasters or aspiring podcasters, and you're like, how do you do what you do? This is where I will show you how I do the things I do and give you access to some of the things I even have coming up, which is beyond podcasting. Like, how do I create a podcast and get people to listen to it and to be engaged I also let you guys sit in on some of the interviews that I do with guests, which I think might be really fun for y'all and see the process. So 
Those are the tiers. If you're like, that would be cool, but something else, you can also always give me a suggestion. But this is how you support Flourish in the Foreign, not only in the vision of celebrating and elevating Black women voices and stories who are living and thriving abroad, but this is how you make this podcast sustainable and have longevity. We've been out here for over three years, over 100 episodes, and it's all about community. So if you believe and flourish in the foreign, you love it and you support it, this is how we do that, right? This is how I'm able to bring you these amazing stories. So go ahead and support Flourish in the Foreign and join me. Because I can't wait to write y'all my thank you notes. I've already been looking at stationery. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash flourish for and there's going to be a tab at the top where it says memberships. Click on that and you can pick your tier. You can join me. Yay. Second thing is that if you have not joined the Flourish in the Foreign newsletter, be sure to do so. The link to that is in the description of this episode. You can also find it on the website. The third thing is that we have a book club coming back and also a bookstore for you to check out. The book club is part of the Flourish in the Foreign Community membership all tiers and also the bookstore you can find at flourishandforeign.com slash books. You can check out the books that I have recommended for all of you. And the cool thing is that some of these books have been written by past podcast guests. Some of these books have author chats either published or upcoming as well. I will say though that I am so excited about this book club and these author chats. I'm just so excited. I'm currently in the midst of Beyond the Shores, A History of African Americans Abroad by Tamara J. Walker. And it is so good. And I love it so much because I see so many parallels to our modern day. And I've learned about so many historical figures that I did not know about or only knew part of their stories. And honestly, this book just reaffirms what I've been talking about the entire time. <laughs> you know, this concept of living abroad as a pathway to wellness. And what does that mean? What does that mean? And the calculus that all of us have to figure out as to what that means individually as well as a family. It is a really wonderful read. I cannot wait to talk to Miss Walker about this book. And this book is already in the Flourish the Forum bookstore. So definitely grab it. Yeah. And every sale in our bookstore supports the podcast. So check out the books that I've selected so far for your reading pleasure. I picked some books that are going to really help you to thrive abroad and to live a life well lived abroad. Books that are a little bit more how-tos, but also books that are just meant for your deep contemplation on life. <laughs> like, And if you go to the website and you click under the tab of resources, you'll see our bookstore that we have which our bookstore is based out of bookshop.org. So we're always supporting local bookstores. And we do receive a small commission at no extra charge to you, but it supports this here podcast. And I'm very, very excited about our little bookstore. I'm excited to add even more books. And I'm excited to interview some of these authors. So definitely check that out. The fourth thing is that I want to make sure that you guys, if you're new and if you're not new, that you have been checking out the Flourish and the Foreign archives. For all the new listeners, and even if you've been a listener for a minute, I want to highly, highly suggest that y'all go back to the very beginning of this podcast. If you have not, and listen to these episodes. The reason why I'm suggesting to listen to the podcast from the beginning is actually a couple of reasons. One, because I know that when you listen to a podcast, you kind of scroll through to like countries that you think are interesting, or maybe you look at the description, some of the summaries I've put in, you're like, okay, I'm interested in that, that, that. But I can honestly tell you that there are so many gems 
dropped by these phenomenal black women that you maybe don't want to go to the country they lived in. Maybe you don't have the same life as they've had. You don't, you've not made the same choices or anything like that on the same goals, but they will bless you with their wisdom, their insight and their vulnerability. And so I highly suggest you start from the very beginning and get into it. Okay. I also suggest you do so because I know a lot of y'all are podcasters or aspiring podcasters. And if you listen to how the podcast has evolved, I think it'll really inspire you to continue to develop your craft, to be creative, and to just be consistent, right? I think at the very beginning, you'd be like, this don't sound like one of these latest episodes. No, it doesn't. But this is the power of consistency and having a strong vision and being committed. So I really want to suggest all of y'all who are just now joining me. And even if you've been here for a while, now I know I have some OGs who are like, girl, I've listened to every episode. So who are you talking to? Okay, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not talking to you. And I appreciate you and I love you. But for everybody else, I really do suggest to go back through, listen to episodes. You're like, I don't even care about this place or da da da. You will be blessed. I promise you. And if you're not, you can write me an email and tell me I listened to it and I wasn't blessed. That's fine. One last thing. For those of you that listen to the podcast on Spotify, you probably already know that you can write replies. I've done polls and things like that. It's really cool. It's really interactive on Spotify. Just a heads up, I can't reply to any of your questions or anything like that on Spotify. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe they'll fix that, but I can't. So if you have a question, I do suggest you to drop me a question via my ask me anything in this description. There's a link. So ask me a question, record it, or you can email it to me, or you can save it for my next ask me anything episode. Now I will say this, and I say this with love, and I'm going to be as delicate as possible with you that I know that a lot of people's questions are based on immigration and how someone immigrated somewhere. I just want to let you know that some of you guys know that some of you guys don't know that Someone's immigration status is very personal information and is a very delicate subject. So I'm just telling you that this might be a very innocuous question. Like you're just curious. You're trying to see what it is. I'm just letting you know that you may ask a guest that kind of question and you may not get the response that you're looking for because it is a very personal question. Okay. And sometimes it's fraught with a lot of emotions, or a lot of stuff that's going on in people's lives. Like immigration is a very delicate subject matter. And until you've done it, then maybe you don't really understand why that is. There's always so many different things that can happen. It's just a lot. So I just want to let you guys know that you guys are free to go onto the show notes page of any of the guests that I've interviewed. And there you can find the information of how you can contact them, the ways that they have allowed me to share for you to contact them. And you can ask them anything that you want. I just want to give you a heads up that certain questions may seem innocuous to you, but are not. They are very loaded questions. So just, I won't say tread lightly, but just be mindful and respectful is all I'll say. All right. On to the next episode. Okay, this is the season four finale of Flourish in the Foreign. And today's episode, I just wanted to really speak to those of you either on your move abroad journey or you're living abroad who are encountering a season of stagnation, right? You're feeling stagnant, you're feeling stuck. And because all of you are incredibly competent and you're a bunch of DIYers, do-it-yourselfers, you are determined to get unstuck. But the more that you kind of try to push and force, you might feel as if, you know, the quicksand went from your ankles to your knees. And now they go into your waist, now they go into your neck. And you might start feeling a little bit of panic. You might be feeling a little bit like you're unsettled. Like, what the hell is going on? 
And I want to just speak to y'all for a second because it's something that is to be expected. I know we all thought we were going to move abroad and everything's going to be amazing or that, you know, I put my mind to it and it's going to happen exactly when I want it to. And we're not finding that to be the case. The first thing I have to say is that everything is cyclical. Everything is cyclical. And I think it's important to understand that everything is cyclical. Everything has a reason and a season. And we all are, as some people have said, you know, just plants with more complex emotions, you know, just needing some water and some sunlight generally, you know. And I want to utilize that metaphor because I actually use something similar in my upcoming book, Flourish in the Foreign. Make sure if you haven't signed up for the wait list for the book, that you go ahead and do that. Yeah. There's something I talk about in the book because I think it makes putting your, getting your head around this journey a little bit easier if you really think about it in seasons. So, If we think about it in seasons, there's a time to plant seeds. There's a time to water and get the nutrients in the sun. There's a time to sprout. There's a time for harvest. And the harvest is not just like, oh, I get to like feast off of everything, but it is the work of pulling up and harvesting the goals and the dreams and things like that to get them to your plate, get them to your mouth. But also there is a season in which the ground has to lay fallow. There's a season in which there is stillness. And even in that stillness, regardless if the land is lying fallow, if it's iced over, there are still things going on underneath the surface. We trust that, right? We don't have to wait necessarily until a spring season to to make sure, but we trust that that's happening. And I believe that whatever you're feeling and you're going through, if you're feeling stuck and stagnant, this is that season, okay? It's normal and it's natural. It actually makes me think about, I had... Jules from All Things Iceland on the show early, early on. I think it was season one, episode seven. And because she lives in Iceland, and Iceland is one of those Nordic countries where they have all the sunlight in the world in the summertime and none of it, or just just about none, in the wintertime. And I asked her, how does she deal with winter. And she reframed it. And she said, you have to deal with the darkness, which is different, right? Because for me, I'm a Southern gal. So I was like, how do you deal with all that cold? (laughs) I mean, the darkness was implied, but like, she really was like, it's the darkness, the inability to see and to trust. And what are you going to do with that time? And she said that preparation was key. She said, if you don't prepare for the darkness, that it does have a way of enveloping you. And so how she deals with it is that she knows she has projects and she has, you know, a schedule. She has her sun lamp and things like that. But she surrenders to the darkness. She surrenders to this time. She doesn't wish for it to be something that it wasn't. And she doesn't spend her time wishing for it to conclude right, for it to hurry up into the next season. She just surrenders to that season. And I think that is important. Now, I'm not saying it's easy because I am a Capricorn. (laughs) For those of you that know anything about astrology, I am a Capricorn, a true blue Capricorn, sun and moon. So for me, there's always something to climb and something to do to sit into stillness is a little bit difficult i just recently got into human design which is also very interesting to me and i found out that i'm a projector and so it's actually very important for me to sit in the stillness and rest which makes so much sense because 
I just be working. <laughs> I'm a very creative person and I believe I can do anything and everything. And so I try to make a lot of things happen. And so when I don't see things happening as fast as I want them to happen, or if I don't perceive movement, it's really hard for me. I start getting a little upset. I'll be honest. I start getting a little upset about it. But upon reflection, I realize that even when you think nothing is happening, something is happening, right? The universe is responding to you, but also something is happening in the stillness, in the stillness of, you know, either a project not manifesting as fast as we want or our move abroad journey has had a snag to it. We're not unsure about where to go, what are the next steps. We're already abroad and we're like, I can't put my finger on it, but it's saying it. something about it's not curling all the way over. What is this? Where am I? <laughs> Why am I here? Why are things not moving, right? There's a lot happening in the stillness. Most importantly, in the stillness, we get to be honest with ourselves. Y'all know how, those of you of a certain age, you know, when we were in elementary school and we had a substitute teacher and they would just give us busy work to keep us busy you know, because they're like, apparently no learning could happen, no exploration could happen. So you just had to like busy yourself while your teacher was out and things like that. I think we take a lot of that into our life now as adults. I know I do. I know I feel like if I am not doing something, then nothing is being done. Nothing is moving. And I think if you are a spiritual person or a person of faith, you understand that that's not necessarily true. Even if you're a person of science, like that's not true. Just because you can't see with your naked human eye, you know, be able to perceive movement doesn't mean that there is no movement happening. And so I think in the stillness, we have to recognize that there is a lot of movement still happening, but it is internal movement that needs to happen. I find that in a season of stuckness, stagnancy, that the movement that needs to happen is internal, right? I have not been clear about what I want or the motives that are pushing me have not been clear or I've put conditions on what I want, right? So what I'm perceiving as stagnancy, as stuckness, is really an opportunity for me to go into deep contemplation and examine my motives and examine the things that I'm calling into my life. It's an opportunity, it's a pause to ensure that these things are in alignment. It's a good place for a gut check to see, is this really what I want? Is this in alignment with who I say I'm becoming? Are there some fears, some conditions I'm putting on to this that are not necessary and might be slowing down the process? So if you're moving a broad journey and you feel like you're stuck and you feel like, yo, am I ever going to move? This is whack. I want to leave. I want you to think about some of the conditions that you have placed upon your move. Maybe you're like, I got to have this, this, this in order. Look. I'm not going to tell you, no, that's not true, but I will ask you to explore whether all the conditions you have put on yourself are in alignment with the life that you claim that you want. Are all the conditions that you have placed upon yourself in alignment with the life that you claim that you want? I think it's a really important time to think about whether... You are moving from an energy of a means to an end or if you are moving from an energy of a life well lived. Those are two different energies. We think that we could get to the same place, perhaps, but I think that's something for you to think about. I also think that if you feel stuck in your move abroad journey, I think it's important for you to think about 
what is the urgency that you feel? Like, write this down. What is the urgency that you feel? Where do you feel it in your body? And why do you feel like moving is the answer to that urgency? Is there a way to, you know, tamp down that urgency before you move? These are just questions I'm asking you. I'm not saying that you don't have a right to feel urgent. I'm just asking you to ask yourself, okay? I also want you to think about in your mind's eye, in the stillness, take a deep breath and be honest about the vision of a life well lived. Be honest about it. And be honest about whether the steps that you have been taking are in alignment with that vision. Again, going back to a means to the end, perhaps you're very clear on the vision, but you feel like you got a hopscotch and double dutch and everything else your way around to get to where you want to go. Maybe because that's all you know. Maybe because you feel like that's logical. Perhaps you feel like that feels most comfortable. But maybe all of that tap dancing isn't actually in alignment with the vision that you claim that you want. So perhaps all the energy that you've been expending, I'm not going to say it's gone for nothing, but it's not having a direct hit, right? It's kind of scattered. It's not really strategic or targeted. And if that's the case, I want you to think about why do you feel like you can't go after exactly what you want? I'm not saying life is like linear, like it's a straight line. But, you know, I feel like sometimes the loop-de-loops we go around and all these other things to get to where we want to go, I think some of them are self-imposed, right? It still holds that we make plans, God laughs, universe laughs, things like that. But how much of the scattered energy, misdirection, kind of superfluous actions is of our own design? I want you to think about that. And for those of you that are abroad already and you're feeling stuck and stagnant, I want you to give yourself permission to say that and to acknowledge it. I'm not saying you got to tell your mama who told you never to move abroad in the first place so she can be like, I told you, I didn't, I didn't say that. But maybe go into the mirror and actually say that like, yo, I'm stuck. I'm stagnant. Things are not going the way I want them to go. Or maybe everything is going exactly the way I wanted it to go, but I'm realizing that this is not it. I'm not having a good time or I don't feel fulfilled. I'm feeling a little bit listless. I'm feeling a little like untethered. I don't feel rooted. I feel like, you know, I'm surviving. and I'm making it happen, but I don't necessarily feel like I'm thriving. I don't feel like I'm flourishing the foreign, Christine. I feel like I'm just out here. I want you to give yourself permission to say that, admit that to whatever degree that is true for you. I also want you to give yourself permission to change your mind. This doesn't even have to do with location, right? Not necessarily. I want you to first give yourself permission to change your mind on how you envision a life well lived, your day-to-day life, your community, all of the things. I give you permission to change your mind. And sometimes changing your mind is not about doing a 180. Changing your mind often, I find, is getting even more clear. It's like filtering out options. That's what it is. It's actually saying no to a lot more things. Right. Which is why when I hear you guys say, I just want to go somewhere with like good health care and good, you know, just these very generalized things. I tell you to get clear. Okay, 
because I don't want you to be abroad and you find yourself stuck and stagnant. Now you can find yourself stuck and stagnant abroad and you are very clear, right? But it's through your clarity that you've learned more about yourself. You've learned more about who you are in community, what you need to feel nourished and to be fulfilled. And some of these things are external. So yes, you might need to move again with this newfound knowledge. And a lot of it, though, before you move is internal and again is in the stillness. I want you to, in this stillness, especially when you're feeling stuck and you're abroad, to really sit with yourself and feel into your feelings. Feel into the things that have been holding you back, the things that have given you anxiety. I'm not a therapist, so I'm not going to tell you to push through because I don't know how great that is for you. But I want you to think about what are some of those anxieties, some of maybe conditions you've placed on this experience that has led to you feeling stuck. Or perhaps think about what are some of the beliefs some of the societal programming you haven't let go of and that you are playing out in this location. And so you have a clear vision and you feel like you're taking steps towards it, but perhaps you're not fully aware of your societal conditioning that is hampering your experience. Contemplate that, whether that might be part of this stuck period, the stagnant feeling that you're experiencing. But I hope you've noticed, whether you're moving abroad or you're living abroad or you're having a project, my advice is not for you to push through, grind it, smack it, don't sleep, whatever. Like that is not how we get through this. There will be times in which, you know, a path is made. There's a light at the end of the tunnel for us to, you know, chase down or run through or whatever. There will be times in which we feel magnetized. And so it doesn't feel like we're grinding. It feels like we're being literally magnetized towards something. We're being pulled by vision. But in the times in which it does feel dark, it might feel stagnant. This is a time for us to surrender to the stillness and to embrace the deep contemplation, knowing that as we are honest with ourselves, knowing that as we have a clear vision, that that is the work that will be moved, right? That is the work that will go beyond us that will move things, that will arrange things and call things forth for us in that stillness. It's through that stillness that we then get inspired action to take and not busy work. Yes? So I want you all to think about if you have experienced a season of, I don't know, winter, winter is coming. If you've experienced it, or if you're currently experiencing it, I do encourage you to embrace it. If you're looking for some tools to help you out through it, I do recommend my Move Abroad with Intention Guide, which I think helps people who are moving abroad and people who are already abroad to really gain some clarity and to do the exercises of deep contemplation that I firmly believe will help draw the inspired action for you to take. Maybe have you have that epiphany that was just waiting for you, right? The light bulb to flash on in the darkness. So I highly recommend that if you are moving abroad and you want some more concrete steps, I highly recommend you enroll in the Move Abroad with Intention self-study course. So, so important. 
if you are a business owner or an aspiring business owner, and that's part of your move abroad strategy, I highly recommend that you grab the Build a Business Abroad guide and go over to my website, christinejob.com, and read some of my blog posts about being a lazy entrepreneur. <laughs> And how to build a business abroad or domestically through soft life principles. And, you know, spoiler alert, embracing quote unquote stagnation and stillness is a part of that, right? So I encourage you to do that. If you're a business owner who's just getting started, and you're looking for more help and accountability, I invite you to join my Build a Business Abroad group coaching waitlist so that when I open the doors for that, you'll be the first to know. And for those of you that have had a business for a minute or a side hustle and you're really ready for your voice to be amplified for your impact to be increased in a really major way i invite you to work with me one-on-one -on -one as a business strategist on my website christinejob.com you can actually read about my philosophy my business framework which i call i do what i want which is so funny. It's always been my motto, but I also, I recently recognized like that is literally my business framework. That's literally what I have all my clients go through is this framework that I call, I do what I want. So if you're interested in that, if that resonates with you, check that out. I also have a mini course for those of you that are senior in your corporate life or career, but you're thinking about making the leap, not only into entrepreneurship, into consulting, but into thought leadership, right? Perhaps you feel like you have a message that needs to be heard, not for your own edification, but truly for the upliftment of this world. Take that mini course, go through that and let me know what you think about that. And of course, if you are ready to work with me as your business strategist, you can learn everything that you need to know about my philosophy, how I work, the methods I work, what you can expect, and of course, how much does it cost to work with me on my website as well. I, there's no hidden anything. You can learn about all of those things. ChristineJoe.com slash business dash strategy. Yeah. So if you are in a space of stuckness, stagnation, in anything that you're going through, I hope these words helped you. And I hope these resources that I just mentioned help you as well. Okay. And now for my extra special treat for all of you, I recorded some affirmations that I think might help you. You know, flourish the foreign, we're not just about moving abroad or being abroad, but about flourishing abroad. And part of flourishing abroad is about embracing a mindset of longevity and sustainability and shifting from perhaps escapism and romanticism into deep appreciation and cultivation. It's a different kind of energy. And so I'll leave you with a couple of these affirmations. You can listen to my smooth, silky voice. Let it wash over you. Take whatever resonates. Leave the rest. And let me know if you like these affirmations. Get at me. Let me know. Email me. Slide my DMs if you like. Of course, if you have any suggestions at all for the show or for anything that I offer, you can always slide in my DMs or go to my Ask Me Anything page. The link is in the description of this episode. You can ask me. All right. Now on to these affirmations for longevity and sustainability. I am committed to prioritizing my health and well-being. I honor and celebrate my cultural heritage while adapting to new environments. I surround myself with a supportive community who inspire and uplift me. I nourish my body with wholesome foods and prioritize self-care to enhance my longevity abroad. I'm resilient and adaptable, embracing the challenges and opportunities that come with long-term expat life. 
I actively seek out wellness resources and practices that promote my physical, mental, and emotional longevity. I honor my unique journey as a Black woman, knowing that my experiences contribute to my growth and resilience. I prioritize self-empowerment and personal development. I consciously create a sustainable lifestyle that aligns with my values and supports longevity. I cultivate deep connections and meaningful relationships that contribute to my well-being. I embrace self-compassion and practice self-care. I am deserving of a fulfilling and abundant life, and I attract opportunities that support my growth and well-being. I prioritize financial well-being and long-term stability. I continuously seek opportunities for personal growth and learning. I celebrate my unique identity, embracing the intersection of culture, diversity, and longevity. I live a purposeful and fulfilling life, leaving a positive impact on the world around me. All right. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Flourish in the Foreign. I encourage you all to join the Buy Me a Coffee community membership. Pick a tier and join us. It's where the book club is going to be happening. It's going to be where the coffee chats are happening. It's going to be where the behind the scenes are happening. So support this podcast in its endeavors to be sustainable and to have so much longevity past three years and a hundred episodes yeah by joining the membership also be sure to check out the bookshop on our website there's a link under the resources tab called books check out the small synopsis of each of the books in the bookstore so far and also go to our bookshop.org bookstore and you can purchase all of the books there. We will receive a small commission at no extra charge to you, but that's how you support this podcast as well. And also read amazing books. And again, within the theme of this episode, I highly recommend you to go back through the archives of this podcast and listen to episodes that you maybe weren't ever interested in listening to that didn't move you. Maybe the title didn't move you. Don't let the title block you of your blessings because I'd come up with a title. So <laughs> don't let don't let my inability to come up with an enticing title block you from the blessings, especially if you're going through a period of stagnation. Go back through these archives and listen to these words of these women I'm sure you will find deep resonance and deep wisdom in these episodes. I can't wait to bring the next season to you. In the meantime, between time, please continue to support Flourish in the Foreign in all the ways that you can. I deeply appreciate it. And big thanks to Zachary Higgs, who produced the music of this here podcast. Remember, it is not about moving abroad. It is not about being abroad. It is about flourishing abroad. So go abroad and cultivate a life well lived. See y'all next season. Bye. Bye.